Hey, it's Tim here. In this video, I'm finally showing you how the new capabilities with Slack and Tableau go together. I'm actually super excited about this, not just because of the feature set that we're going to see today, but actually some of the features that were announced at Dreamforce 2021 uh, were really, really cool. I think it's going to make Slack a really exciting place to be if you're a Tableau user. Anyway, let's get stuck in and find out how to use this feature. Now, if you're a server admin or you're just looking to find out how to set this up because you're a Slack admin and you want to figure out how this should be done in Tableau Online, this is going to be a great video for you as well. Stick around to the end or check out the timestamps to see how this is all set up. If you're here to see how the feature works, let's get stuck in. So how does this feature work in Tableau and Slack? Well, you can see here that I'm logged in as my uh, self. Uh, I'm actually logged in as an explorer here. So you can see that I have uh, content that's been shared with me and I have a few other bits of content that I've created over time. If I go to the Explore tab, you can see that I have access to pretty much everything I would have uh, access to that I've been given access to. And if I scroll down, I want to look for something straightforward like this Superstore workbook. And you want to make sure this isn't in a personal space because, of course, you can't share content that's in a personal space. Once I get to the piece of content, I'll just go ahead and click on a, a standard chart here. So you can see that this is all set up. And if I go to the uh, sharing options here at the top, one of the things I can do is obviously share the item. So let's go ahead and hit uh, my email and hit my name here. I've got several messages here and um, several emails that I can use. So let's uh, type in a message, say, hey, Tim, nice, um, nice viz in Slack. OK, and when I hit share, this will obviously send that off. I'll get that uh, specific uh, message. Now, the thing to bear in mind here is that I'm actually sending this to myself. You can see here, hey Tim, nice visit in Slack. And if I actually go to the Slack application, you can see that I actually have uh, a few items that have already been created. And this one that I've just shared has come up. So what I did here is I sent something to myself and it's triggered a notification. You get a little preview, which is really, really nice. You can click on it to see it in more detail, which is great to see. Um, but then of course, when I hit the overview icon there, it sends us back to that workbook. Now, I have had a couple of niggles with this. I think they had one instance where this didn't load up, but I think it was to do with permissions and me being signed into the wrong Tableau Online account. Essentially, the way Tableau Online knows who to send the message to is it checks the email addresses across both. So if you're not signed into Slack and Tableau Online using the exactly the same email, this is probably not going to work. So you want to make sure those two things are aligned and everything is working well. In essence, this Tableau app is only communicating with you directly. So not everyone can see this. These notifications are personal to you, and therefore they're only going to be referencing things that you can see. So that's the first thing we've done. We've created a message. We sent it to ourselves. Now what we're going to do is go to a comment. And this is one of the other things you can do. Uh, I can go ahead here and mention at Tim. At uh, Tim. Now you can see there's three versions of me. So I'm going to actually select Timothy Nguena because I assume that's my actual full proper Slack version. Uh, testing to see if this is you in Slack. And what I can do is I can attach a notification. Uh, to this with an image. So it takes a screenshot of this almost like a uh, an action. And then when I hit post, it sends it off and you can see that that appears there. And if I go back to the Slack app, um, you can see that this also comes up. So this time the mention is there. So uh, at Timothy Negrena, testing to see if this is you in Slack, this has also come up. So the cool thing about this is now when I click on this, uh, it goes back to the same viz overview. Um, and of course, my message and my notification come up. So this actually opens up ready to go because it knows that that's uh, something that's been triggered. Of course, I also get them here in the bell. Um, the notification uh, menu was improved in the previous version of Tableau. So you can actually see that these improvements are now starting to pay off because we now have a centralized home for all these notifications and we can mark them all as red and essentially that bell at the top will stop behaving uh, like it has with the, with the red icon. So we're pretty much good here. Um, we've done a message, we've done a comment, and now we're going to do an alert. Now the alert is a little bit more tricky because I don't know how to uh, trick this, but what I might do is I might go back to the home page and let's go to explore something. And uh, let's look for a viz that has already hit the target and we'll set the notification to essentially keep going off until we stop it, let's say every 30 minutes or every 15 minutes or something like that. I think that's the safest way to do this. So let's go to Superstore again. And for this one, what we'll do is we'll maybe go to this performance tab and um, set up an alert. It's really quite simple. You need to make sure you select the axis that you actually care about. So in this case, it's gonna be this bottom axis here. Then you go to alerts and then you get this interface that loads up. So. Uh, you can see here, no alert on this view, create an alert and we'll notify you when your data meets those conditions. So let's create one. 
and you'll see that it comes up. Now, at the moment, this alert is configured to work across all the views. That's all I can do. And we can say that, look, um, once the alert has been met, look, send me a message, the data alert performance. Um, we're going to say testing in Slack so we can see this specifically come through. Um, and let's say hourly at most, uh, as frequently as possible is going to spam me, so I won't do that. Hourly at most. And um, for this one, let's just start typing my name in and see if we can see. It's going to be the Timothy Nguena account. Um, and we can make this alert visible to other people so other people can see it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and create this alert and we'll see this alert has uh, been created successfully. Now, one of the things you can actually do is you can edit it, remove it, check it and so on and so forth. And that's fine. But I think what I have to do now is wait for this to be triggered. Essentially, the 19,000 condition has been met. If I actually go on this and I click on it, you can see that it's, it's been triggered at least once over here on the left hand side. Uh, and you can see the settings here for the right hand side. So we're just basically waiting to see uh, when I'm going to get this email that September office supplies has actually crossed the threshold. So if I go back to alerts, um, you should see that it was last triggered 30 seconds ago. That means we should have got a notification now. So if we head back to Slack, you can see the alert has actually triggered. We get a screenshot and it generates a screenshot of the entire view, which is kind of cool. When you click on it, it's barely legible, but you can zoom in and sort of see what's going on here. So this is quite nice um, to see that there, there's a little bit of thought going into how these load in Slack. So it's not just that it's tiny image, you can zoom in and semi-interact with it. What I'd love is to have um, those views embedded here in Slack, so I don't even have to leave Slack. I'm sure that's coming in the future, seeing as Slack is basically a web environment anyway. So that's gonna be super, super interesting. Now, of course, we get a few options with alerts. You can see here that I can click on uh, this particular link. It'll, of course, send me to the tab itself and I can go and view the viz. Um, the alert doesn't come up here though. Um, this is essentially just sending me to the viz straight away. If I go back to Slack, I can edit the alert, manage the alert and remove myself from the alert. So it's really nice to have these quick performances um, these quick changes here in, in here in the settings that we can use. So if I go ahead and select edit alert, it actually opens up the browser, goes to the alert and opens up the edit function straight away. So it's a really nice feature, it's sort of baked in. Um, again, what I'd love is never having to leave Slack. I'm sure that world is coming uh, where when you click on that setting, you'll be able to change everything right there. You can also remove this from the alert setting. So you can just go ahead and click on this box and remove it. I don't want the notification every hour. Thank you very much. So let's remove that there. And let's go ahead and close the other tab. And that's pretty much it. That's the capabilities of uh, Tableau in Slack. This is sort of a long time coming, but um, this is nice to see. Now, uh, what is interesting about this is that um, Tableau have been asked a few times, what about people who use Microsoft Teams? Well, the way they're building this, they fully intend to have this capable in other uh, platforms. Now, they haven't said when or why. I'm sure there's going to be uh, features that are going to be work better in Slack because that's, of course, the parent company, Salesforce, owns both companies. So they're going to be things that just work better in Slack compared to something like Microsoft Teams. But I'm sure you'll be able to get things like alerts uh, available in Microsoft Teams where you'll be able to send notifications and messages off to those platforms as well. I'm just not sure is going to be as integrated as you can get in Slack. And if you check out my video on Dreamforce, there's actually an element there where they have a section called Slack First Analytics, and they actually talk about some really interesting features. I'll try and put them up on screen as I'm talking now. But some basic features, for example, the ability to uh, do ask data and explain data inside of Slack without having to leave uh, Slack to you know go to Tableau to see something and actually getting responses with charts as well as well as basic um, sort of questions being answered. So this is going to be really, really powerful, I think, uh, for conversational analytics. I'm not sure how relevant it's going to be for businesses just yet, but it's a really innovative approach to some of the most common challenges. Uh, and I'm sure they're going to be really good niche use cases, simple use cases that will be first to adopt this. So I'm really excited to see what those niches are, what those uh, verticals are, and we can see how this feature lands, okay? If you're interested to know how to set this up, stick around, that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so how do we set this up? Now, the first thing you can see here is that I've got three screens open. Now I've got my Slack instance open. I've got a browser tab with various things open, not least my Tableau online site. 
can see here that I have two users. I have a uh, documentation on how to set all this up. I have my Slack app directory up with the Tableau app. You can just go ahead and search Tableau if you haven't already found it and it will take you to this page. And then I've got my app management tab open as well for Slack because essentially you need to make sure that you can approve the app. Now for this installation, if you go to the Tableau documentation, I'll put a link to this in the description as well. Um, you'll see that there's some requirements. So you need to be a Slack workspace administrator. You need to be a Tableau administrator and you need to be a Tableau administrator. Just say it twice, Tableau administrator twice, um, according to the documentation. The main reason this is, is actually there's an OAuth step. There's an um, authentication uh, step that requires you to be the administrator to do this. So you're gonna need to make sure that that's all, all locked in. Now, in terms of other capabilities, it actually walks you through the installation here in a very sort of clear way. And this is all really nicely set up. So um, I actually props to Tableau for setting this up and making this as simple. Slack is in itself a cloud-based uh, technology so it's also got very sort of simple and clean setups so um, that's going to be sort of interesting to see and if you're here for the first time because you're a slack user well great welcome to uh, the channel and hopefully you'll find something useful today now um to set this features up um you can sort of go through the guide. I think it's pretty straightforward. Now, the other thing is um, you need to make sure you're reading the instructions specifically for Tableau Server and for Tableau Online. You can see here that I'm actually on the Tableau Online instructions. I need to actually go back to the Tableau Help here and go to Tableau Online, go to what's new because we should see the capabilities about Slack mentioned here. Uh, some new features. So here we go, share, collaborate, and keep up with your data in Slack. So here we go, uh, integrate Slack with your workspace. And now I'm actually on the right instructions for Tableau Online. We can go down here and you can see the setup is slightly different. So the first thing is make sure your Tableau is, uh, you're a Tableau server admin. And what you need to go and do is go to the integrations tab. So for Tableau Online, it's slightly different to Tableau Server. If I go ahead to my settings pane here at the bottom and I go to integrations, you'll see that I have a list of integrations. Of course, Salesforce is the top one there and Slack is this one here at the bottom. So let's just make this a little bit larger so we can more easily see what's going on. I ended up highlighting that instead. Um, I'm recording recently on Windows. Man, there's a few things on Windows that are just uh, you know difficult and I'm using Windows 11, so it's just double whammy. But nonetheless, uh, connect to Slack and when you do that, you should get this pop-up. So the Tableau application is going to behave in this manner. So when we hit allow, um, what I'm essentially doing as an admin is giving that application rights to be uh, sort of integrated. And you can see here that this has been connected. Everything is working fine. If I go back to my Slack uh, page, although the apps here doesn't seem to have a Tableau section. So what we now need to go and do is finish the Slack uh, setup uh, that we need to go through. So if we go to the Tableau help guide here, uh, integrate Tableau with Slack, you'll see that step two is to add the Tableau app to the Slack workspace. So let's go and go to the Tableau uh, uh, app here in the Slack app directory. If you're wondering how to find this, just type in Tableau. You'll see that it comes up and it takes you to this page. Now this page, depending on uh, you know what level of access you have as an admin and so on and so forth, you might see a few things popping up. For example, if I go to the app management settings and I switch on require approvals, you'll see that a whole new interface comes up. And then if I go back to this page and refresh, you'll see that instead of just uh, you know setting this up in Slack, I'll also have this approval message at the top. So depending on what you're seeing, it just depends on how your Slack environment is set up and whether or not you're an admin who can actually approve the app. If the app has been pre-approved, that's gonna be great. If it hasn't, then as an admin, you'll need to come in here and set this up. One of the things you can do is you can actually switch off uh, the requirement of app approvals and automatically allow apps that are on the Slack app directory. So you can essentially have like a happy balance by trusting what Slack are doing with the app directory. But typically, I think most admins are going to want to switch the app approval on. And uh, when you go over here to uh, this particular space, you can see that you can review all the scopes, essentially what the app can do. And it's got these basic setups. So read, uh, read emails, uh, chat, write, and files and write. So basically everything's set up. Now, you can see here that the option says open in Slack. The reason it says that is because I've actually previously added it to Slack already. So by doing this, all it's going to do is it's going to uh, redirect to Slack and you'll see that it adds the application and now it's working. This conversation just between the two of you, it's basically Tableau set up in Slack. So this is all working nicely. Everything is ready to go and we can actually start playing around with this. Now, if I go back to this uh, main tab um, and I actually go back to the um, to the management uh, options, if I go back to apps, 
uh, you'll see a confirmation in the installed apps that Tableau is indeed installed and it's also been approved. The approved apps live on this page. These are apps that require approval. You can see that I've just approved this today and so now it's appeared here and it's ready to go. Uh, if you restrict an app, it would appear on this list, but basically all your apps are ready to go. I can see here that I've got Google, Google Drive, Tableau and Twitter approved for the Tableau Tim Slack environment. One other thing to make sure you do before you get going is as a admin, once you've set this up, you need to go into your general settings here and go and try and find the uh, option for notifications. If I just uh, go ahead and type notifications, you see it searches the page. If I go down to the fifth one, you'll see that I have these three options here for comments, shares, and data alerts. Those need to be ticked in order for this to work. Otherwise, people won't be getting notifications uh, for those particular features. Now, if I was to exit out of this and I'll just go to homepage and then go back to my own user settings, my own account settings has its own setup here. So I can actually go over down here to the alert section. And so the server has some general alerts that are enabled and then each user has their own settings for how they want notifications to come in. So you can see here that I don't have email uh, notifications for comments going through to my email but I do have all three set up for Slack. So there's a couple of places you need to check for. As your own user, you're gonna to need to come in here and make sure these settings are correct for you. And then as a general server admin, you're gonna to need to go into the settings and make sure that these are enabled for everyone in the first place, because essentially you can lock these down for everyone uh, for this specific site. If you've got multiple sites, then of course you'll need to do this for every single site that you've got set up, and then you're pretty much ready to go. So that's pretty much everything set up. Uh, we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, and that's it. All you now need to do is go ahead and start using the features. And um, hopefully you've already watched the beginning of this video to see how that all works. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Um, if you like this content, you know what to do. If you don't, let me know what could be better in the comments and we'll try and make a better video next time. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.